Lenovo Think Smart Hub 500 Microsoft Teams Room System video. Today we're taking a look at the Lenovo Think Smart View. The View is one of two devices recently announced to be part of Microsoft's new Microsoft Teams device category, the Microsoft Teams Displays. The Think Smart View will, is the first device to come to market for that category. A Microsoft Teams display is supposed to be a personal device that is separate from your PC. It sits on your desk beside your PC or work setup. And eventually later this year, there will be integration between the Microsoft Teams client on the Teams display and the Microsoft Teams client on your PC. This integration will allow you to lock and unlock the device from one location and to integrate the Microsoft Teams client between both devices. Also, coming later this year, at least to the US and other locations to be announced shortly after that, the Think Smart View will be able to be a hands-free device with the use of Cortana. In this video, we're gonna unbox the View, take a look at the components and what ships with it, take a look at getting it set up on your desktop, explore the use case, and then demo some usability of the device itself. Let's dig in. Okay, I always love the unboxing part because it feels a little bit like Christmas, right? We're opening a new present and looking at all the cool things inside. Let's go ahead and crack this thing open and look at all the different components. Right off the bat, we've got the Think Smart view sitting right there. And if we look at the top of the box, there is a black foam uh, attached adhered to the surface to protect the device inside. There it is, all put in nice plastic wrap to protect the surface. We'll get that off in just a moment. We've got our quick start guide, we've got our power source, and that does it. The rest of the contents is protective foam and cardboard to help position the device properly. Let's go ahead and get the wrapping off and take a closer look at the device. And as we remove that, Set this down, put this over to the side. Taking a closer look at the device, we've got the 8 inch HD 1200 by 800 resolution IPS touchscreen right up front here. We've got the built in speaker uh, as well. This allows you to use the phone like a speaker phone if you so desire. Uh, right up front here, we've got the 5 megapixel camera. And on the very side of that, there is a built in uh, shutter for the camera. See it's red now. We have put the shutter on the camera so we have some privacy and we can flip that back down so the camera's enabled again. Looking at the very top of the device, we've got two holes up there that are our microphones, our microphone mute button, and then our volume up and down. I'll make a note that Lenovo says you should position the device this way rather than this way. This is wrong when you see all this info up top. This is correct when you have it positioned like so. At the very back, we've got our power uh, cable, our power port tucked right into that hole there. There is a Qualcomm Snapdragon 624 processor on board, two gigs of RAM and eight gigs of storage. As you can imagine, with only a power cable, setup is a bit of a breeze. We're simply going to take off the uh, the band that holds us all in place. We're gonna plug this into the back and then we'll plug the device in down below. Flip it around. We've got our port right there. And there we go. It kind of is a snug fit with the rubber on the edge there, but it should fit in there just like that. You can feel it click into place. Once we've got it plugged in, we'll take the cable, plug it in down below and get it powered up. We have now plugged in the device. You can see that the screen is powering up. Let's bring it up closer here. There we go. Coming to life for the first time, post-manufacturing. Immediately, we're brought to the 
language selection screen. We're going to leave it on English. Click Next. Next, we choose a Wi-Fi network. Once it connects, we show as connected. We can click Next. We can choose a Bluetooth device at this time. Right now, it's detecting my PC there. If we had like a headset, for instance, that we wanted to connect to for uh, ease of use rather than speakerphone mode, we could do that at this time as well, but we'll skip for now. And there we are. We are ready to sign in to Microsoft Teams. With the ThinkSmart view booted up and ready for us to sign in to Microsoft Teams after we made our initial uh, setup selections, we have our sign in button down here to get started with Teams. However, we can take a quick look at our settings. I noticed that our, our time is a little off there. So we've got English, we already chose that. We have time and date, we can set our date. It already got the right date for us. We can update the time based on network, which is great, uh, but we don't have the correct time zone. There we go, we've got Eastern set, updates our time for us. You can use a 24 hour format if you want to, and then you've got your date format down there. We're gonna leave that as is. We go to our display, adaptive brightness. We can turn that off if we want or on, a little bit of uh, intelligence built into it there and then our screen timeout settings. So how many minutes uh, without any activity will the screen um, take to go into uh, standby or sleep mode, right? We'll leave it at the 10 minute default for now. And then our brightness level, we can turn this down a bit and that actually works a little bit better for the video. So we'll leave it there for now. Uh, it's a little bit dimmer in person, but for the video, it's perfect. Accessibility, you got a few uh, accessibility options in here. Uh, large text, high contrast, color correction. Uh, some of those that you've been used to seeing lately. We've got our WLAN in there, uh, our, our uh, different Wi-Fi networks that are available. Uh, Bluetooth capabilities, we've got it turned on by default. Uh, this is what the device shows up as to other devices if we need to pair. And you can pair your device here in case we want to pair it with a headset. And we've got the IP address and all the firmware version information, uh, partner app versions down here as well, Teams version, and your serial number at the very bottom. Legal info and the Lenovo user experience program opt into that by default. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off for the moment just because I like privacy, but uh, you know, thanks for the offer. You can click on reboot phone and say yes or no. We're gonna click cancel. Uh, the phone lock is grayed out at the moment. For the admin settings, you need to add, input the admin password. With the admin password, we've got debug, your network configuration, and then password and sign out right here. So again, prompt you for password if you choose any of those options uh, to set them. That's your device settings. Going back out, let's get signed in. Now at the sign-in screen, like with other Microsoft Teams devices that we sign into, you can either use the on-screen keyboard to peck in the actual uh, username that you're signing in with, or if you've got a uh, Bluetooth connected device like a keyboard, you could use that here as well. I always like to do the sign-in from another device. because That gives us our code and we can get signed in on our laptop. Now that I've signed in on my laptop, we should be uh, getting in okay. We have an MFA prompt here. After putting in the code that we received, we finish our MFA prompt there and we get signed in. It goes through the workplace join uh, that we expect it to through Intune. And then we get signed in fully to Microsoft Teams using the ThinkSmart view. Let's say got it. We already know all about Teams and what we can do there. So as it pops up, here is the, uh, the interface that we, we see. Coming in a little closer here, if you are used to seeing the Microsoft Teams interface on other devices, this is very similar as, as is by design. Microsoft wants a cohesive experience across all devices. But you've got the Calls tab right here that we're on. You get your contacts listed out, favorites, recent. You can use the dial pad, of course, to dial a PSDN number if you've got that capability. You can start a new call over here and look up a user that way. Down below, we've got the calendar for upcoming meetings or meetings that have taken place today. 
Uh, and then we've got our voicemail. So we can go over here and manage our voicemail, listen to messages that were uh, previously left, and, um, and then you know delete voicemails if we need to right from there as well. You'll also notice that there is a call park button up here as well because call park is enabled in this tenant. So all good on that front. Going beyond the capabilities for Microsoft Teams, if we go to our menu, you've got your image that was pulled from Microsoft 365. You can set your status here. You can set a status message if you want to as well. Um, we can also manage devices. So if we need to connect a device to this, we can, but right now we don't have any Bluetooth devices that we are connecting. So uh, nothing to manage at the moment. Hot desking, we have that capability as well. We're not going to do hot desking at the moment. So we'll stay signed into our regular account. And then settings, all your usual settings for Microsoft Teams, your theming, delegate management, uh, your own profile, all your calling features in here, call answering rules, voicemail management, uh, delegate calls, blocking calls with no caller ID. Uh, you can get the information about Microsoft Teams right there, the version that you're on. You've got the sign out button, your company portal down below, and device settings, which we already reviewed uh, outside of having been signed in. One of the interesting and more versatile aspects of this device is that much like a mobile phone, you can change the orientation of the device. If you want it to feel more like a person-to-person -person conversation and less like this elongated device, you can actually switch the device into this orientation and the screen will flip around. Then you've got your menu. You've got calls here same set of menu options you have to click on a call to actually get your dial pad back so it's a little bit different layout uh, going back in here we've got the people uh, right here that we can search for and then we've got our calendar view a little bit different and voicemail view a little bit different you'll notice on the calendar view we can also manage meetings and create them right from this device as well all right let's say we've got a bluetooth headset that we want to connect in here we're gonna go down to settings and we're gonna to go to device settings and we're gonna to go to Bluetooth. We're gonna say pair new device and it's looking for all the different devices that are currently in the environment. Let's grab our focus. Yes, we will allow. It is now connected. We have connected our Plantronics focus to the Think Smart View, and it now shows up as a device in our Bluetooth section. What we're gonna do right now is a quick demo that is a, a bi-directional video call. We wanna see what the video looks like coming in on this eight inch display, as well as what the video looks like coming in on a Microsoft Teams client using the five megapixel camera on the front of the device itself. We've got this thing sitting on the desktop, kind of right where you might normally see uh, an IP phone set up. No real uh, surprise there, right? It's, uh, it's kind of serving that same function and purpose, just on a more advanced, specific, unified communications approach. So let's initiate the call from our Microsoft Teams client. We click video call. The camera wakes up and we get a call coming in. We click accept. First thing we need to turn the audio off or we're gonna get feedback from this awkward uh, devices being close to each other scenario. We need to turn our video on because it's not on by default. Now we've got our video down in the bottom right, uh, bottom right hand corner and we see the video coming in from the our person that called us um, through their team's client. So actually that camera right back there is taking the video that we see on the screen. And then over on the uh, Microsoft Teams client itself, we've actually got uh, the video coming in as it is being recorded through the five megapixel camera on the ThinkSmart view. So good quality. We've got a good thing happening here. Um, we don't have as fluid motion in the Microsoft Teams client, not due to the view, it is due to me recording on this machine in 4K and hampering its, its resources, really. So that's what's going on there. But if we take the device and flip it, We'll notice that the picture rotates right with us like it's a tablet or, or a smartphone, right? And we get this uh, alternate view 
of, uh, of what it, the meeting looks like when it's in this mode. Kind of more of a portrait mode, right? Over on our laptop, we see the top of my hat and you need to keep in mind the positioning of your camera versus where you're at and how, uh, how much you are positioned either above the camera or below it. So keep that in mind if you use the device in this mode. We'll flip it back onto its side. Auto rotates, and there you go. A Microsoft Teams call with video bi-directional. There you have it, the Lenovo ThinkSmart View, the first of the Microsoft Teams displays category, and it is available now for purchase with those advanced Microsoft Teams integration features coming later this year. Now, a couple questions that I normally hear about this device are, why, why this device versus just using my Microsoft Teams client? And yes, the same capabilities exist in the Microsoft Teams client. The two big items that I think of when I first think of why a separate device off to the side. First, resource contention. If you are on a machine with limited resources and maybe you run out of CPU frequently, whatever the problem is, and you are someone who is constantly working in 20 different applications with numerous browser windows open, resource contention can be a problem. Jumping into a meeting with video going back and forth, content being shared, lots of audio, that can start to put a strain on your machine in terms of bandwidth and your resources. Being able to turn to that device sitting right next to you, click the join button for that meeting or answer that call and not have any of those resources be eating away at what's going on in your laptop, to me, that could be a huge win for a lot of people. The second thing that I would say is, again, the scenario where you've got a laptop with a ton of different windows open, you're kind of uh, one of those people that works in chaos well, right? There are windows everywhere, you're shuffling things around. Not that, to say that's ideal, even though you can do it well. Having to shuffle those windows around for yet another call or another meeting is just one more thing to have to manage on your desktop. If you could instead turn to the device right at your side, click answer or jump into that meeting and keep doing what you're doing with all your other cluttered windows, that simplifies things, makes it a little more streamlined, and you start to build a habit of communications right here by my side, all the rest of the chaos happening right here on the laptop. That's not to say you'll never use the Microsoft Teams client for unified communications, but certainly while you're at your desk in this type of environment, you can see there are very clear benefits. Thanks again for watching yet another overview and demo video. I hope that it was helpful. And if it was, I do implore you, please splash it around social media. And of course, if you found this interesting and helpful, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not already. Turn on those notifications so that you get to know the next time I post some other crazy video, whether it be about technology or gardening maybe, you never know. Uh, and uh, and we'll hope that we'll see you back here for the next video. Thanks again.